Hi, Year 9. It's Mr Ashley. Thank you very much for joining me to talk about GCSE Mathematics. As you all know, maths isn't an option. It is something that you will all be studying next year. But I still think it's really important that we have a look through. We look at the importance of mathematics and why it is that you'll be doing it. Firstly, here at Darton, we have an absolutely fantastic maths department. We all focus on building your basic knowledge during your GCSE that would then let you go off and do whatever career, whatever job and life that you want. It's really important to have that basic understanding and more and more jobs now require you to have a solid understanding of maths in order to prepare you fully for them. We go beyond just doing the basic concepts uh, during our maths lessons and I think that is really where you start to gain as an individual. We look at reasoning mathematically, making sure that our students can problem solve, that we can communicate with our oracy or written and really importantly using that mathematics to back up our arguments. Finally we would also develop our data and mindset most importantly is resilience, I think, for maths. It's sometimes hard when you're told your answer is wrong, but having that resilience to go back and to repeat and to retry, and it's something that we'll always strive to improve in our students. Of course, we also have respect and responsibility so that you can contribute positively to the life of the school. So in your GCSE mathematics course, you're going to follow the same main six branches of mathematics that you're used to. First, we have number, the building blocks of everything that we do in maths. Here on the right hand side, you can see some very important numbers. All of our internet security is based, in fact, on this, these particular types of numbers. We then have algebra. Again, a very famous example here on the right hand side all to do with looking for right angles in constructions. Algebra is used in a wide variety of contexts, but it is just a system we've created to be able to solve problems. And you'll learn how to manipulate that system, how to solve with that system, and how to form with that system. We then have ratio, proportion, rates of change. Again, very important. Here on the right hand side I'll give you a challenge to decide what exactly I'm making of these ingredients. But then of course if I wanted to make double the amount, how would I manipulate those ingredients? Geometry and measures. You've already seen one type of example where we'd be finding missing sides of our shapes and we spend a lot of time on our 2D and 3D shapes. But then we also look at measures, compound measures such as speed exactly what is it that we would be calculating what does 70 miles per hour mean. We'll look at probabilities, how to express basic probabilities which you're used to but then also how to combine that into multiple probabilities, of, sorry probabilities of multiple events. We'll look at uh, finding relative frequencies, expectations and all that sort of thing. Again a challenge in a basic game of Monopoly, which is the best colour? Which colour should you always purchase if you're given the chance? Or which should you avoid? And you can always show this with mathematics. Finally, we've got statistics. We'll look at some graphs. This one is a line graph on the right hand side. We'll look at how we can draw these graphs, how we can interpret these graphs. And of course, most importantly, how graphs can be made to look misleading. This on the right hand side is the stock price for HSBC and it looks very, very positive. However, if I then change my graph, I can make it look completely different. It's still the same company. It's still the same data. I've just made it look different. So how will you be assessed? Same way as most subjects, we have examinations at the end of year 11. These are three papers and will be split into either a foundation or a higher tier. Foundation tier will give you a grade between 1 and 5. Higher tier is between 4 and 9. There's one non-calculated paper 
and then you have two calculator papers. Each paper is worth the same amount of 80 marks and each paper is the same length as an hour and a half. There are a few specific non-calculator topics and obviously a few calculator ones that you will not be given on paper one, but generally all the topics that you've learned across your course can be assessed in any of the three papers. So how does this course link to future courses and to your careers? Having more students take maths after GCSE is a huge push at the moment because it is what our employers are looking for. You develop key knowledge, understanding of their mathematical techniques if you do go into a mathematical field, but also even if you went into a job that doesn't directly use those skills, you'll still have developed problem solving, communication, logic and resilience. It's still, as an A-level, the most popular A-level that you can take it still has the highest student entry and would still lead on average to the highest amount of money. The courses that you could take, you have your typical A-level mathematics and A-level further mathematics. They've also added in a level three core maths. This is usually taken by students that want a less academic route but still would like to have those doors opened for them. Typical problems of GCSE core maths is much more functional. An example could be that you're given the population of Brighton and you're asked how many dentists and you're left with that problem and you have to try and solve that. And then of course we have A-level statistics where you're going to look even more specialised into data, data analysis uh, and just displaying data. Finally, I just want to leave you with this image. This is where maths could take you. And this is only a very small set of examples. Maths is crucial for any career opportunity that you go in. To open any door, you need at least a GCSE grade four in maths. But really, the higher grade you can achieve, the more options will be open to you. Thank you very much for spending your time to listen to me. And I I hope you enjoy your maths lessons over the next few years.